Hello, my name is Mark Payne. I'm from the Danish Technical University here in Copenhagen. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to be with you during the first few days of the ICES conference this year. However, in this recording, I'm going to tell you about the workshop W1 that I helped run as part of the Santos Symposium earlier this year in Brazil in March. And the, the main topic and what we're trying to address in this particular workshop was the question of uncertainties in projecting climate change impacts in marine ecosystems. And I was helped to convene this workshop by uh, Manuel Barand, by William Chung, and by Brian McKenzie. And the goal of the workshop and what we're really trying to get at was we're trying to answer the question about how confident are we about the robustness and the usefulness of projections of climate change in marine ecosystems and how relevant and how useful are they for informing adaptation and mitigation strategies. And as you can imagine, this is a very complex and multifaceted question. And so the way that we chose to approach this was by focusing on the elements that contribute to uncertainties. And it was a particularly well attended workshop. We were fortunate to have uh, six speakers that spoke in the first half of the day. And then in the second half of the day, we split into discussion groups where we discussed some of the issues in more detail. And particularly these discussions were later collated and have gone on to form the basis for a manuscript. The workshop was also very well attended. We had between 50 and 60 participants on average. So as I mentioned earlier, the main approach that we used to address this, this question and the underlying theme of the workshop was this idea of the types of uncertainties. And there are many different ways that you can, you can classify uncertainties about climate change projections. We simply use one of the very standard approaches that's used in, in climate change modeling, where you can divide uncertainty into initialization, parametric, structural, and scenario uncertainties. And it was very interesting that the first three speakers in the workshop all showed this figure shown here on the right hand side, which comes from a paper by Hawkins and Sutton published in 2009. And the essence of the figure is that it looks at the various contributions of uncertainty to predictions of climate change. So on the horizontal axis, we have lead time out to 100 years into the future. On the vertical axis, we have the contribution or the relative contribution to the total uncertainty in the projection. And then for each of the three um, types of uncertainty that they looked at, they were able to partition the uncertainty into these three components. And so what we can see straight away is that there are substantial differences in what is the most important type of uncertainty over time. In early timescales, it's the initialization uncertainty that's the most important. Whereas at longer time sales, the scenario uncertainty actually starts to take over and eventually dominate. And the fact that this figure turned up so frequently in our workshop really led us to start thinking about these types of questions. In particular, how can we start to think about these, doing this type of analysis and quantifying our knowledge in this way when we start to talk about projections of marine ecosystems? So the approach that we took was, as I said earlier, we looked at each uncertainty type and asked the question, what are the approaches that are used for assessing this particular uncertainty type? We also started to think about how has the community actually addressed this and has it been done sufficiently? And if not, how can we actually do a better job of that? So to illustrate some of the, the issues and ideas that we came up with, um, we'll look at some of these uncertainties in more detail. The first type of uncertainty, and I'm sure that which you're all very familiar with, is the concept of scenario uncertainty. And this is simply the uncertainty associated with future projections of carbon emissions. And so on this figure taken from the IPCC report, we see an illustration of, of that. On the horizontal axis, we have the projection out in time. On the vertical axis, we have the global average surface temperature. And depending on the scenario of carbon emission that you choose, you can end up with um, a continued warming of up to four or five degrees, or you can end up with a global air temperature that starts to level off and stabilize somewhere around about one and a half to two degrees. And so this is a, a particularly well handled and well recognized concept in projecting marine ecosystems. And that was one of the, the first and easiest conclusions, if you like, 
that came out of the, the discussions and the workshop. However, some of the other types of uncertainties we found were not so well handled. Another important type is the idea of structural uncertainty. And this is the question of how you build your model up. What components do you put in? Which processes? How do you represent them? And so to illustrate this point very nicely, we have a paper here from Miranda Jones in 2012 looking at future projections of mackerel distribution in the North Atlantic. And all of the elements in these projections are similar. They use the same uh, input data and they use the same climate change scenario. The main difference, however, is the actual species distribution model that's used to make the projections out in time. Um, and each of these panels corresponds to a different species distribution model. So if we look at some of the fine details here, for example, if we look in the region around the North Sea and Iceland, we can see that there are substantial differences in the projections. Similarly, if we consider the Azores, as I've highlighted here, we can see that we get um, anything from quite a substantial amount to essentially nothing. And it's this particular type of uncertainty that we classify as structural uncertainty, the uncertainty inherent to the modeling structure. By reviewing the literature, we found that this is often very well treated in marine science, but there are substantial differences between communities. We found in species distribution modeling, it's very common, whereas in the ecosim foodware type of modeling community, it's much less frequently handled. A third type of uncertainty that's very rarely handled in marine science is the idea of initialization uncertainty. And this is simply the idea that the initial conditions of your model are uncertain. So that then when you come to project them forward in time using a climate change model, for example, um, that uncertainty propagates and can expand. And we found that this was very infrequently handled in marine science. And we actually ended up having to take an example from, um, from atmospheric science to, to illustrate this point. This paper from Clara Dessa in 2012 illustrates it very well. And what they did was they took um, exactly the same climate model and exactly the same future scenarios and forcings, but they simply modified the initial conditions of their projections. And they chose around about 40 ensemble members, each with a slightly different but extremely feasible and extremely realistic initial condition, and then projected them forward in time. And so the figure shown here on the left hand side is the average warming trend over North America over 50 years. However, that particular averaging and that particular map hides the fact that with around that average, around that average trend, there's actually substantial variation, ranging from the warmest model shown up here in the top right to the coolest model in the uh, in the bottom right. And you can see that it's not just a question of the spatial pattern being different or the magnitudes being different, but even the sign in some cases can be different. And so we can see here, this particular model suggests cooling of the Great Plains region, whereas this model suggests warming. So this type of uncertainty is what we call initialization uncertainty. And we found that this is very rarely considered in marine science, but we expect that like uh, air temperature, it could actually potentially be quite important. So to sum all this up, if we look at the individual types of uncertainty, we can see that scenario uncertainty was generally very well handled. Model structure and model parameter uncertainty are well recognized and often handled. But initialization uncertainty is almost never treated. But this uh, scheme is perhaps a little too simple because it's also quite rare to see multiple uncertainty types considered together and their relative importance is quantified. That's relatively rare as we, based on our analysis. Um, and so this suggests that we have a, still have a very long way to go to achieve the degree of understanding that we see in, for example, physical climate modeling. So all of these um, conclusions and all of the discussions from the workshop, we've brought together into a manuscript uh, of which I am the lead author and which we've submitted to the conference special issue, which will be some, published in the ICES Journal of Marine Science. The title is Uncertainties in Projecting Climate Change Impacts in Marine Ecosystems and it's been conditionally accepted. If you're extremely eager to get hold of it, please feel free to contact me, or it's also available via my ResearchGate profile. Um, otherwise, we hope it will be 
available on advanced access within the year. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm sure my uh, co-conveners will be able to answer. And if not, I will be back at the conference on Tuesday night. Thank you very much.